Grace and peace. My name is Ryan and I love to watch movies. I'm a pastor of a congregation in Orlando and when I see movies I think theologically about the messages that they're sending and the deeper meaning behind them, interpreting the way we would interpret other texts like the Bible. This week I watched the movie Doolittle with my wife and it was, uh, it, it was an interesting experience. You know, I wasn't bored, but it's not a movie that I think people are going to remember in another couple of years. It was mediocre. The plot was uh, a, a similar version of the same kind of plot that we've all seen numerous times before. And so it's an interesting thing to try to think theologically about it. I mean, what's the movie saying? What does it mean if it's a story of the voyage and return plot? You know, hero goes on a trip, comes back changed, uh, defeats the antagonist. Then uh, that's got some pretty standard meanings in terms of uh, personal development and puberty, what it's like to change over time. But it's, it's not really doing that. It's not putting a lot of energy into that. So that leads me to ask deeper questions about what it's really about. Well, if you ask Robert Downey Jr., who starred in the movie, he would say that he wanted to star in Doolittle because superhero movies were such a big deal and he was such a big part of them. And this is a superhero whose superpower is listening. And that's such an important message for our time. You know, how important listening is and what if listening could be heroic. Well, that's that's interesting behind the camera. That's, that's interesting off screen, but it didn't come through. It, it really wasn't in the movie. And I think if, if I can think of anything in terms of the lasting impact, in terms of the message that gets sent when you watch Doolittle, what's memorable about it, what's unique about it, what does the text of the film really say? If it says anything, it says that animals are really cool, especially interesting animals, especially animals like dragons. Um, and so I thought if I was going to talk about anything, and I was going to relate it theologically to the Bible, the important thing to talk about would be the cool biblical animals. You know, the Doolittle story, it's a traditional story. It's been told for a long time, and it comes out of a Christian culture. And so it's interesting that the sorts of things, the exotic animals that Doolittle experiences, they are the same sorts of exotic animals that often show up in especially English translations of the Holy Scriptures. Um, we can talk about, you know, the, the hardness of various fantasy stories. Sometimes you get harder fantasy. Game of Thrones is considered, you know, pretty medium hard versus softer fantasy like uh, Peter Pan, where anything goes and we can just, we don't have to explain anything, magic happens. Well, this is a, this is a pretty hard type of fantasy. The only thing that is not functioning in this world the way it functions in the real world is that this guy can talk to animals and that the animals can talk back and they can talk to each other and that there are animals that exist that don't exist in real life. Well, things working pretty much like the real world except for talking animals, that's pretty familiar to someone who's read stories like Genesis chapter 1 through 3. The creation story, the Garden of Eden, where there's a talking snake and the talking snake has opinions. Of course, there's the story of Balaam and his talking donkey that takes place in the Bible. And uh, you even get, in certain places in the Bible, stories of fantastic beasts. You get, again, in Genesis 1, the great sea monsters that God creates in and among the waters. And we can ask interesting questions about the interpretations of the great sea monsters. Some have said that that's just a word and it could apply to, you know, whales, great white sharks, anything big in the ocean. Some have said maybe megalodons, you know, they're, they're big, they used to exist, they, they were created by something. But some have also said that that's probably a dig at Tiamat, the character from the Enuma Elish creation story where she was a great monster that the hero Marduk slayed, and in some ways the Hebrew uh, story is 
playing jazz with that, being like, oh yeah, you think your sea monster's really cool? God created the sea monsters like fourth. God doesn't even care. Our God's so much better than your God. And we get that in other places. In Numbers and again in Job, the King James Version famously renders a particular animal, the ram, uh, as a unicorn. And so in 1611, in England, they thought unicorns were real. I think it's, is it Wales or Scotland? One of those countries there has the unicorn as their national symbol. They, they thought, well, yeah, they're rare, but they're, they gotta be around here somewhere. Uh, and so they figured, oh yeah, we're looking for a ram. It's a big, powerful thing with hooves. That must be the, and horn, that must be the unicorn. Um, now there's speculation that maybe ram indicates wild ox or even the auric which is a now extinct kind of giant cow type thing. Some have said it could be a rhinoceros. And you've got the behemoth that shows up in Job, the, the big sea creature giant thing. And of course, last but not least, both in Doolittle and in the Bible, the dragon. The dragon that shows up in Revelation and wants to snap up the child and occurs in a couple other places in prophecies and uh, figurative language and in the long ending of Daniel. If you're Catholic, you have a story about Bell and the dragon or Bell and the serpent. It's interesting that these stories about these fantastic creatures keep showing up and we keep wanting to talk about them and we want to play with them. And I think Doolittle's right. I think those animals are really cool and I think they're fun to think about. So. It's been a great excuse to get to nerd out with you and talk about some of the wild creatures that are in the Bible. Which ones did I miss? Why don't you send me a comment or uh, tell me about your favorite animal that shows up in scriptures or in fantasy. And I will see you next time. And when in scenes of glory I sing will be